G'day swingers and good morning. It's Sunday the 17th of July, a beautiful day, the odd beautiful day we have. We have a very special guest this morning. Um, This gentleman has, well, he's a former bank robber uh, and was involved in some crime some years ago. He spent over 30 years in some of the toughest prisons in the country and he has a, a wealth of stories. Uh, everything we're talking about this morning is of public record. Uh, we're not talking anything out of school. Uh, sir, I would like to say to you, good morning, Mr. John Killick, uh, and welcome to the show, sir. Good morning, Mac Aaron. It really is a pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as usual, I think we'll get stuck straight into it, which I usually like to do. Uh, Basically, I'd like to ask you, John, mate, you're a, you're a Sydney boy, a little bit about your childhood uh, and your upbringing and where you're from, and, and possibly what led you, led you this way down the path there, sir. Well, yes, certainly I, I was born in Sydney. Uh, I was adopted. Yep. Um, that's way back. I was born in the middle of uh, World War II. And I've, I've written four books. The first one called Gambling for Love, Cover my life story up until 1973, and I'd like to talk about that if I could. Sure, talk about sure, please life. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, your father, you, as you said, you were adopted. Your father. Yeah, well, my father. Uh, you know, he, he was a good guy, but he used to. He was a tough old guy. Uh, yep. You know, sort of came up through the depression. Um, yeah. In the, in the late twenties uh, and thirties, and uh, was a boxer, was Balmain champion, uh, and yeah, that doesn't yes. seem much, but Balmain was a very tough area. If you if, oh, if you could be champion uh, in Balmain, you you were pretty tough. And uh, but the trouble is, uh, he he uh, liked to drink, and yep. uh, he used to get drunk. And uh, in those days, uh, I remember as a kid, Saturday and Friday nights. Um, you know, we were terrified. He'd come home absolutely drunk, violent, smashed doors, abused neighbours. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I know you know, yeah. yeah. And, and it didn't physically harm us, not, not very very rarely, but uh, it, it was the intimidation, the psychological. You know, we, we slept under the house. You it's know, terrifying. It's, it's, it's terrifying. Young, young kid, we'll walk yeah. the streets at three in the morning with my mother and my brother. And uh, it, it's, and you know, you don't want to go to school because, you, yeah. you know, uh, even though it's mainly Saturday and Sundays uh, and Fridays, uh, yeah. it, it sometimes it would happen. He'd bring booze home, and it happened during the week. But uh, it, I sort of lived in a fantasy world a little bit, uh, yeah. sort of get away from that. You're and, sort of on edge a bit too, because you always you, on edge. If your dad's had a few, and you yeah. come home and you see that he's got a few more, there, you're thinking later on, okay. Oh, always yeah. on edge, and yeah. uh, he got into fights. Uh, you'd see him get into fights. You're worried because he's your father. You're worried he's going to get hurt. You know, yeah. and. Uh, and a few times I saw him uh, in a fight there, uh, and Mum was saying, "Kill him, kill him!" And she was talking about the other guys. She was, <laughs> and it's terrible, bloody. And oh, look, look, it was, it was yeah. a tough, um, it was a tough life. Uh, I missed a lot of school. Uh, I had, yeah, I had all the illnesses that, that most kids get, but uh, I was particularly a sickly kid, really. And uh, yeah, you know. You were pretty I, close to your mother, John? I was pretty close to my mother, um, not knowing who I was. Dad used to throw it at me that I was adopted mm. and, uh, you know, and you'd say I was a black bass and didn't know where I come from and all that. Yeah. That was when he was drunk. When, when he was sober, he'd he talk to me. Yeah, yeah. he'd say, did I play up last night? And he, yeah. He, he was a decent guy. Uh, yeah. And that's that's the, the split personality. I think we've all got it in us. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. The booze brings his... The booze, it, it, it either it takes that. you down the good path or the bad path. It, 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 it yeah. does, and I've seen it with so many people. I've always, I've always avoided it. Yeah. Uh, I think I've yeah. been drunk twice in my life, and both times I regret that. You know. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, you're doing better than me, John. But, um. well, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I, I stepped in a gambling, uh, which yeah. was uh, probably more damaging than, than I don't know about more damage, but uh, can do a lot of damage too, and it's one of the reasons that I finish in jail. For, I was going to say, so long, with yeah. the gambling, that, that was a... You know, a pathway to the to the easy catch. To well, yeah, look, um, what, I remember I was sitting next to a kid called Warwick Morris in school, and uh, you know he used to gamble. And I used to say because Dad used to have a few bets down at Balmain. We lived living in Balmain, and uh, everyone used to bet with had a punt back then. Didn't yeah, they, they yeah. did. Yeah, there were there were there's people in, in just about every street, yeah. and uh, the cops used to allow it. They'd always on the take a little bit, and. Uh, yeah. 
and in the it local was a pub. Entertainment. Uh, really? Well, there were no TABs. So yeah. I, I think yeah. I think the TABs came in '64 and they started to um, mm. come down on the bookies then. But there's there's always been SB bookies. There's still SB bookies today. Yeah, and yeah. you know major ones. Uh, but but the thing is that um, Dad used to say to me, "It's a mugs game" because he used to lose a little bit of money. He didn't bet high. Yeah, and I went around. I used to play a lot of tennis. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> It was raining. You were a good tennis player. I was, right? I was, yeah. yeah, I won a few trophies for playing tennis. And uh, so I went around uh, to see uh, my mate Warwick and he had all these race guides strewn on the floor and uh, he's listening to races. And I had nothing to do. And he said, pick a horse, pick a horse. It's a Caulfield Cup day. So I said, all right. I remember Dad saying, champions, you know, champions can overcome anything. There was this champion called Red Craze and it was top weight. And I said, I, I think I'll back this red craze. Can you put five shillings on it for me? Yeah. And he said, you're yeah, crazy. He said, it's a heavy track. He's got top weight. He'll never carry that. And I said, it doesn't matter. He's a champion. Put it on. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't I care. If I like, yeah. Bloody red craze is last, 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 last. And then half a mile ago, he's made this big run, come around one by four lengths. Oh. Yeah. And then I had picked two more horses. They both won. I was hooked. Was it was it was a bookie dirty on you, mate? <laughs> oh, well, well, I, you know, I, I just couldn't believe. It's you know, yeah, just yeah. been going on. I'm really good at this. I'm really. Yeah. You, know, I, I'm, you got a taste. I, and, I'm exceptional. Yeah. You know, I, like, I just picked the winners. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, so I was hooked for the next fifty years. Yeah. Really, or, or forty years maybe, but um, certainly uh, it got me in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get the game. We got me in a lot of trouble, and uh, I. In those days, I could control it. I just used to bet what yeah. I could afford. And uh, but um, as yeah. at, at, when I left home, mum mum couldn't handle it much more, and she she uh, suicided in nineteen fifty nine. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. yeah. And I, I was yeah. I was only seventeen, and uh, my brother was oh. fourteen. And I left home. Like, yeah. yeah, I left home that day, and uh, you know I just still remember it. And uh, he couldn't believe it, Daddy. said, "Well, you can't believe this." I, I saw him. I blamed him for what happened, so yep. I just blamed him and I said, no, look, I'm, I'm going. And I, I was ill-equipped. I didn't have any money, uh, uh, you know. Very Losing little, your very money. It, yeah. it shattered well, 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 you know, I was yeah. sort of in a daze. So I booked into a cheap um, boarding house at Burwood, a share room. Next thing, this big wrestler is trying to, trying to rape me, you know. Oh, yeah, right. and, uh, I'm a, and it's only that I was screaming out like blue murder. Yeah, you know, and he stopped and yeah. uh, he apologised. Yeah, and he was genuinely yeah. apologised. He never tried anything again, but um, I was dirty in that. And uh, he was going to uh, going to Brisbane for the, oh. these uh, wrestling championships. And he had Tommy. Had, His wrestling uh, was huge. Sixties yeah. and seventies. Yeah, Australia. well, he tried big, to get yeah. me into wrestling, Holland, and do you know? Oh, and, you know, so unbelievable. And uh, I just couldn't believe it because I was in a state of shock as it was. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then this happened. I didn't know anything about all that. This just adds to it all. Oh. Anything and um, John, what happened from there? When when, when was your first uh, well, stint in prison? Well, what happened is that um, he had he was ripping off the social security. That's why I mentioned this. And, yep. uh Now I was dirty in a world at this stage. Yeah. Over what happened. And when he was leaving, going to Brisbane, um, I took. He had five different bank books, yeah, and, right, under yeah. different names. I took one for his signature, yeah, put right. it back in. No, I kept it. That's right. And uh, he didn't know. He packed it and went. And uh, I went to the bank, but I practiced all the signatures. Yep. And I went to a new uh, boarding house, practiced all the signatures, threw all the withdrawal forms and the thing. And, and yep. the landlady was sneaky. Went around and 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 found these withdrawal forms. And she gave me up, so the cops came and they knew straight away. And it's, um, so that was technically my first bank robbery. I got away with it, but I got yeah. arrested. Threw me into Albion Street. Um, I should have learned then. It's the only time I went to a boy's home, and uh, I was 17. and I was probably, Jesus, that would have been tough. Well, back I, then. Yeah, I was yeah. the biggest kid, and we had to all strip off and uh, five at a time, and uh, they're standing there watching you. And I didn't like it, I just didn't mm-hmm. like And, you know, this guy warned me, he said, look, um, you know, the bigger boys, you're okay, probably the bigger boys rape the little the little boys. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. And, of course, we found out later that the uh, people who were staying there too were raping the kids. Uh, it, it's just shocking. It was, it is, it was yeah. institutional abuse right right across us. Not, not just Australia but, but, but the world. And uh, yep. it's coming out now through the Royal Commission. And whatnot. And I've, I've just written a book about it called the, um, the Voice of Survivor, Russell Manson story, and uh, he went all that became a bank robber, uh, a drug addict, and overcame all that. And uh, abuse and, and yeah, homes and, and, and yeah. great story of redemption. But um, 
it, it came out in the Royal Commission just how many um, people were, um, were, how many kids were, were raped and abused. And it turned out it was in Ireland, it was everywhere, it's across Europe, uh, England, and America. Yep. It's, it's happened everywhere. Yeah. Um, so you you really got to wonder at man man himself uh, why he does these things. But it's unbelievable. Kids yeah, it's, raping it's, kids. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's no excuse for it. And, uh, there's not. <clears throat> excuse me. It's 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 uh, unfortunately it happened a lot in the churches too. And oh, anything with yeah. institutions or a community situation like yeah. that where you're living in a community, so uh, it's bloody well, awful. Well, and it still it, goes on today. I think to a degree it's more about power than 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 any else. Yep. It, it's the power that they've gone over these kids. Power, you know? and yeah. sexual perversion, and, and, and whatever. Yeah, they, they've got no power over their own lives when they're out. And but so in there, they're, they're somebody and they, they exert this power. Oh, it's so, unbelievable, yeah. mate. It's shocking and. Uh, um, they're doing with it now, but most, a lot of them are dead. A lot of, a lot of them are dead that uh, did, did, did do these things. It's bloody awful. Anyway, I uh, got, uh, so I was personally on my own, um, hooked up with a few kids out of me, myself. Uh, yep. They taught me how to shoplift, stuff like that. And, you know, I, I did it. I had a chip in my shoulder. It was me against the wall, as far as I'm concerned. And, this was the start of your education in this yeah, area. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I, uh, I, I got, um, I was landed on Long Bay with a uh, with break and enter when I was uh, in 1960, I was 17, early, early 1960, Jeez, 17. That, that alone would have been terrifying. Too. Well, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't because yep. I was still sort of, um, I just sort of, in a way, I was sort of blaming myself. I said, well, whatever happens, happens because that, that's the attitude I've always had that um, yep. you brought this stuff on yourself to a degree. Um, um, and I always felt, I don't know where I got it from, this confidence I could handle any situation. It's, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's pulled me through. It has pulled me through. It's a, I, I think we've all got two characters. And that, that other character, I had as a kid, used to pretend I was a hero doing all this and doing that, telling yeah. kids stories. And uh, sometimes you'd sort of, when you got in this trouble, you'd sort of try and be that person. And that, 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 that really pulled me through because uh, you imagine three guys in a cell, my mate and I luckily were together, and then we had an, uh, an older guy. Uh, we're in a cell. There was a bucket in a corner. That was the toilet with some disinfectant in it. You had a jug of water, dirty old jug of water, and that was it. You had some dirty blankets, um, coir mat mattresses. Three, yeah, three basic little cots, sort of thing. Yeah, or, well, yeah. no, one on top of the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah three, three and uh, triple bunks, and, and that yeah. was triple bunks. Um, no sheets, no pajamas, and uh, just the clothes you got, uh, and the uh, and you wore your own clothes in those days. Yeah. So you you had your own clothes. Um, a on, couple of stinky on, on demand, yeah. And um, lights off at, at nine. Yep. Uh, no books. No. Very hard to get a book. No radio. No TV. Nothing to do. So what a lot of guys used to do was gang up on the third guy and and, and rape them. And, and uh, yeah, because they had nothing else to do. It, uh, it was it was bloody absolutely. Shocking. We were lucky that. Jim and I, again, we had this old guy who actually taught us the ropes. He said, look, you know, he's are both in danger if you get it separated from me. And I said, yeah. he was right. Um, but I was lucky. I got, got into a chess game um, with this young German guy. And I beat him and he jumped up and he hit me over the head with a chessboard. And so we got into it. And, yeah, right. Uh, and I got on top of this guy. He, he, he wasn't much of a fight. He was just angry sort of kid. And... Uh, I got on top of him. They come and said to me later, look, um, you're lucky because people have seen it. You'll have a go and they'll yep. probably leave you alone, which yeah. they did to a degree. He said, but don't get carried away because these guys in here, you know, they could have one hand tied behind their back and they'd handle you easy. And, which is right. There were some tough guys. There's some tough bosses, um, isn't there? Yeah. There was a blonde kid got raped in the showers, knocked out and raped in the showers three days before that. And uh, and that was only the ones I heard about. Uh, yeah. it, it was prevalent. So when I got out of there, and the um, screws did bugger all. They turned a blind eye. Uh, well, they didn't. They wouldn't enter the showers. They, they were too scared to go to showers. They, they, in those days, showers had a lot of mist and all Steve that in there, and, yeah. and, that, and they wouldn't go. Well, they get a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were some tough guys. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And uh, they just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so you can imagine some young kid going in there, yeah, stripping off and having uh, a shower, yeah. and uh, you know. Poor yeah, yeah. yeah, bloody awful. It's, it's shocking, really, really shocking. And uh, I, I was pretty lucky to get through all that. You know, yeah. And, uh, anyway, we got out on a bond. We got a bond after three months. But uh, later, I went up to Orange, uh, got mixed up with a girl up there, and uh, her brother came up with this idea, robbing the Western stores, this place at uh, Bathurst. 
and he'd been in jail, and the four of us went on and did it, and the, they lowered me down from the skylight. Yeah, right. Yeah, they didn't have didn't have alarm. Lowered me down from the skylights and got in, opened the back door, no alarms. Yep. Uh, jewelry cases, heaps of suits and clothes, and uh, it was just, you know, I think we got twenty thousand pounds worth, worth of gear in the car. It's bloody huge amount of money. Well, well that, that, was, that was that was like maybe three hundred thousand now. Yeah, but, huge um, amount of money. Yeah, but the thing is. Um, it was a stolen car, and I yeah. didn't know. And what what happened is that the, we ran out of petrol near lift going. Oh no! Yeah, and tried to siphon. The bills on the road. No. Oh no! Yeah, tried, <laughs> tried to siphon some petrol, and the cop car came. And um, anyway, oh, we all got arrested. And, yeah. Uh, and then I tried to escape. We four of us would agree agree to escape. And um, yeah, I didn't like jail at all. And we, we yeah. were at Bathurst jail, and uh, so <laughs> we're there, and uh, we agreed the four of us would take off. Yep, and uh, we had two cops in those days. Country cops, they they didn't think you'd got to escape. We're going to go, all these yeah, old fashioned cops, you know. Yep, and uh, so I said, all we got to do is shove the cops out of the way. Yeah, we're unhandcuffed. They're taking us from the court back to the cells. Yeah, and we go in four different directions. At least two of us got to get away. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so I shoved the old sergeant. Yeah, yeah, in the back. He stumbled forward, and uh, and I took off, and. Uh, the others just sang out, good luck, Johnny. Right. Uh, so and, you're on your own. You're I'm on, on, on yeah. my own. And yeah. so the, the uh, detective came after me. He uh, he was overweight. Yep. He couldn't have catched a runaway from a kindergarten, this guy. So <laughs> he, he's pulled out a gun, bang, 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 fired shots. Oh, I'm running across. I heard him. And I knew, I'd read somewhere, I knew that if you hear it, you haven't been shot. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear so, it sort of whistles past yeah. you sort of thing. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I was just 18 at turn 18. And, uh, yeah. I mean, what the hell am I doing? I was playing a year before I was playing tennis. You know, yeah, yeah, tennis. that's right. There you're running from uh, Run, running from cops, yeah. and, and uh, it just wouldn't believe the transformation. It was all out of crap. You know, yeah, and uh, it seemed a bit surreal the whole thing, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, and I hid in a chooks pen. I ripped my yeah. right, and hid in a chooks pen. Thought I'd got away, and uh, but this old lady'd see me and give me up to the cops. Why don't you hold your nose on that chook pop? I tell you, it's a shocker. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was better than being in jail. Yeah. But. Uh, so anyway, then I was escapee, so I couldn't go to uh, a minimum security or anything like that. And uh, I remember the governor, he was dressed in one of those country suits and uh, sitting there, you know, and he said, uh, do you realise what you've done? And it was almost as if I'd killed somebody, you know. Yeah. And they put me in a bloody cell for two days, stripped me off. Uh, it's freezing in the middle of winter, about July it was. Lithgow? Yeah, bloody no, it was Bathurst. Free- oh, Bathurst. Bathurst. Yeah, and, bloody uh, freezing. Like and, yeah. and I couldn't see anything. There was a Bible in the corner. We couldn't read. It was dark, pitch dark. And uh, and yeah. it's just, um, you know, I, I walked up and down. I was getting angry. I just, but I used to sing. I was singing that. The acoustics are really good and you, you, sound, yeah. you sound like Elvis Presley, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, when I get out, I'll be a singer, you know. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, always optimistic, you know. But also, well, I suppose you're saying you're not going to get to me. So I'll yeah, that's right. Happy well, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, they they come in to um, when they open the door and they sit down. You sound like you're murdering somebody in there, killing. I said, well, yeah, no, I'm singing. I'm happy, you know. Yeah, yeah, they that's said, right. What are you happy about? You know, yeah. I said because well, I'm only here for two days. I said you're here for the rest of your life. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, nice comeback, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, I had a chip on my shoulder, and I give them yeah. as good as I can. Yeah, but. I'll give them this. They uh, they didn't bash me. Um, yep. They could have, but I got bashed by the cops when I tried to escape. When, when they got me back, they, they gave me a bit yep. of bash. But um, the uh, so what happened is um, they sent me when I got sentenced. They sent me to Goulburn because I had to escape. And it was called Goulburn Training Centre. Now, now Goulburn is really a very heavy jail now. In those heavy, days, yeah. it was for first timers, but. You've got to remember that a lot of murderers, a lot of murderers are first-timers. Um, they've never been in any trouble. And there they were, all these people. I used to listen to police files when I was a kid on the radio. And all these famous cases, they were all there. Yeah. The Kingsgrave, Slash at a bigger bomber. He blew up his cop and his, and his wife and it was be, at bigger and because uh, he'd put... Uh, Done something he didn't like, and uh, so uh, was Bradley to kidnap. And uh, all yeah, these people were there. Fellas, yeah, yeah. All these heavy guys... Um, and I actually became friends with the King's Graves Lancer, and uh, I liked him, but uh, yeah, he was a pretty good runner. And uh, yeah. we, we used to run the running races here, and uh, sat, sat next to him uh, in a tailor shop, showing me how to do pyjamas and whatnot, make a reasonable wage there. And um, 
I remember he got divorced, uh, his wife, because he used to go out, creep in the windows, slash women's night, night you know, and stuff like that. Yep. And he had them all terrorised, a champion runner. Yeah. And right. his wife was terrified, so he put all special locks in the doors so she'd feel safe. She was actually living with him, you know. Yeah. And so when she divorced him, he sat there crying. And, and uh, you know, I just said, this poor bugger, he's, uh, he, he really thought she was going to stay, stay with him. So it broke his heart. Well, when I got out, I finally got out, um, he said to me, uh, John, would you do me a favour? Give me a girl to write to me. Give me a pretty girl to write to me. And I said, well, I'll try. Yeah. So you wouldn't believe it. I met this girl on the train. I just got out of jail and uh, we are sitting there talking. Her name was Colleen. And uh, she said, well, yeah, I said, I've been up visiting my aunt. She said, oh, I thought you might have been in jail with that haircut. You know, she, yeah. She picked it straight away. So, yeah. So, yeah, I said, I did. And... Uh, it's she, not something you'd say straight away. No. Is it? Well, I've just got out yeah, she, she got straight on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she said, what are you in jail? I said, oh, bank robbery. She said, oh, you don't look like a bank. Because I know. We all wanted to be bank robbers. But yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, she said, you look more like a, you know, a con man. Or a... <laughs> this, yeah, she was up front, this girl. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, Thank you, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, well, you want to go for a drink? And then she said, yeah. And uh, there's Dad bloody waiting for us. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't believe it. Dad's waiting at the bloody station for us. And so we all go down. And he's already half pissed. We go down. <laughs> we, we go down to have bloody a beer, and I'll, I'll never forget it. Bloody, uh, he's telling her all these bloody stories. And all she wanted to do was get away, you know, yeah. because of dad. Yeah. So he spoiled my first night and any, any chance I had. And she, yeah. she, she bloody left. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you remember stuff like that because you know, your first time in jail, you get out, you, yeah. you, you pick the girl up. Yeah, you're on the way. You know, you got a chance with this girl, and uh, there's yeah. your dad there, and he's telling all these stories. You're on a high. You got out of jail. You just met a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the highlight of, of the whole thing was that um, when she said she was going, I knew. The way. So I said, "Look, would, would you like a pen friend? Uh, you know, someone in jail?" She yeah. said, "Yeah." She, she said, no. "I see a really nice guy." I said, "Bit older than me, no?" I said, "But she said, well, who is he?" I said, "His name's Dave Scanlon." She said. Well, hey, but what's he in jail for? I said, I said, you know, he was a King's Grave slasher. Yeah, yeah. And she went whack. <laughs> she's whacked me across the face. Yeah. And Dad, I'll take that as a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dad said, wow, what a, she's got a good right hook. <laughs> yeah. I'll I mean, take that as a no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And she said, you and your father are weird, she said. And she, she stormed off. And uh, uh, I realised then that I wasn't going to get any pen friends for, for the King's Grave slasher, you know. But yeah. Yeah, at, uh, yeah. So that, that they're the sort of things you remember at, at when you were a kid and young and yeah. naive. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's just um, I met a girl, American girl, and uh, she, uh, we fell in love. We uh, madly in love, and the next thing she's going to America. Of all the girls I could have met in Australia, I met a girl who's going to America. States, I try yeah. to get yeah. there. They said, no, you got a criminal record. It's mine. That's it? that's but the things they that would not. You, yeah, they so would not I, let me go and. Uh, it stuffed their ring. Did and, she know what you were doing at the time, John? Or you? No, she had no idea. Yeah, she had, but you know, I wasn't doing anything really serious. I was doing work and that, yeah. that as well. But uh, so when uh, when uh, that happened, they stopped me going. Yep. I did a duel, duel robbery with this guy to get the money to, to get a false passport, and uh, and I uh, snatched the jewels. He was waiting across the street. This is in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. I just went in in Burwood. It was and. Uh, I could overlook at the rings. I was getting engaged. He went, snatched, grabbed these rings. We're worth quite a lot of money. We yeah. had it. But this bloody guy didn't give me all the money. And I, the next time I met, and I said, look, you know, we're shorty. I needed a certain amount of money to get overseas. And uh, yeah. he said, oh, you know, you, you're supposed to get two trays. You only got one because she, she pulled one of the trays back. Yeah, right. Yep. And he said, the guy was upset. I said, he was upset. I said, you've given him really good value. He's only given us a bloody quarter. Yeah. Anyway, we did, I didn't get as much money as I should have. It turned out he kept a couple of rings, got yes. arrested uh, in a pub, trying to sell them. Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, he knew I'd check with a, with a, with the uh, this guy called the Swede. He knew I'd check with him, so he tried to sell them and uh, got arrested. <laughs> Give me up, and they'd come and grab me. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah. I got arrested for that. Finished up getting a couple of years. So she set off to America. Mm. She, she arrived in America today. Kennedy was that's no, no, you know, forget oh, it. Oh, I was yes. bad. She remember where you were, and, 60s, sort of yeah, yeah. and uh, it was a hell of a day for her to arrive. Um, my, my old mum still talks about that. It yeah, twenty second of November, nineteen sixty three, and uh, some big stuff going on in the sixties too. Mate, oh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know, it's um, the sixties um, was the 
so, so much happened. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, and it's uh, I I just think. And that you spent a lot of that. In I just jails, spent a lot of it in jail. It. Yeah, oh, I did. And uh, in those sixties, John, who who was some of the? You met some pretty pretty uh, well. What do we say? Famous crims, you know, as well. In that. Well, well, um, in the sixties, not so many. Um, until I, uh, what happened is that uh, when I got out, um, I wrote to him. We were back on, yeah. And uh, but then uh, I just, buddy, I just knew I couldn't get to her. It, it was driving me nuts. So, yeah. And uh, she was, she was still waiting for me. And uh, oh. oh, she was going with a guy, and a little sister used to. He said he's got a Porsche, he owns a bubble gum, his father mm-hmm. owns a bubble gum factory, and you better hurry up and get over here, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, he's cutting your grass, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I bloody finished up hitting the bank. Um, at uh, I'd always wanted to rob a bank, yeah, and uh, I'd always thought if I'm going to be a cream, I should rob a bank. And I knew that people didn't rob banks because the tellers had guns, yeah, and they were trained. Yeah, so, and the bank manager and what well, it, well, it, well, the it bank was... manager and the accountant definitely had guns, and sometimes some of the other tellers had them, and uh, and that's why not too many guys tried it. And yeah. uh, the only ones I knew about were Darcy Dugan, who was famous escapee, bank robber, and he and Kevin Simmons, who escaped um, in '59 uh, with Newcom from Long Bay. They, they finished up killing a prisoner or so. Oh, they serious. went. They, they went to. Uh, they went to MU Plains, bust in, and got caught, and, and uh, in a struggle, they killed him. Oh. So. Simmons finished up doing life. Yep. Um, Dugan was doing life. They were the two bank robbers I knew. You'd think that would be enough yeah. for me to say, oh, look, you, d- you just don't rob banks. And then, and then Ryan and Walker busted out down in Melbourne in late 65. Yep. And they got caught and Ryan got executed. I'll yeah. tell you a bit more about that later. And, and yeah. Walker got 36 years. So you'd think if you're going to be any, don't be a bank robber. Yeah. You know, don't, don't be a bank robber. But um, I went ahead and did it and uh, got away with the first one. But um, the second one I did um, it was on the 14th of uh, February 1966. It was the day we changed over to, yeah. to Desmond. Oh, yeah, yeah, from Pound yeah, to Desmond. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what happened, um, you wouldn't believe it, I parked outside a bank, but I was doing the one across the street. That bank teller saw me. He was a bit suspicious. I left the motor running. And there was no left jail. And you started with the uh, salt paper on ignition. And... What happened? An old lady came over. And yep. It was Valentine's Day, and uh, she came over and said, "Excuse me, young man, you've left your motor on." <laughs> and I said, "Yeah." She said, "Said there's thieves around here, don't you?" Yes, <laughs> thieves. <laughs> I, I said, "Oh, okay, thank yeah. you." And I, I went over and she's watching. I didn't have a clue. And I pulled the like, <laughs> and she's looking, you know. And I said, "Thank you very much, man." I said, "Look, yeah. I said it's Valentine's Day." I said, "If I could, I'd buy her some flowers." Yeah. And, and she saw oh, you're a lovely man. About two minutes later, I'm running out of the bank. <laughs> Bag of money. Bag of money, yeah. Chased by the bank manager. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and a butcher in there. And uh, <laughs> who, who I robbed him too. He put, he, <laughs> oh, he put, he put all the money. Because when I went in, they apologised. I said, look, we're sorry, sir. We hardly got any money left. They said, they've cleaned us out. Because everybody come in because of change over day. I thought there'd be a heap, but it was the opposite there. <laughs> so I robbed the butcher and he was blowing like, he was going to jump me. I said, look, it's all you. Yeah. You're covered by insurance. I said, the bank's got to cover you. Don't worry. It's, yeah. You'll get your money back. Yeah. You, know, you can see you wanted to jump. Did you have a little pistol? Or no, like I, no I, had, I had a thirty-two uh, automatic yeah. that I'd taken from the bank. Yeah. The previous <laughs> bank. I took. See, that's the thing. That's why they stopped giving them. Uh, pistols, yeah. The bank robber started taking the pistols off them. Getting access yeah, to and, the guns, yeah. Yeah, and it had Commonwealth Bank written on it, which uh, <laughs> was when I got caught down in Melbourne, I had this bank. With, you know, how, how the hell am I going to... Yeah. Explain that, yeah. You know, so I was in. It's just stupid, you know. Um, yeah. I wasn't really a smart criminal, but but I was pretty daring. You know? Yeah. Ballsy. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember in '86 they celebrated um, 20 years forming the armed robbery squad, and the Telegraph they wrote a big article, and they said that I was a guy that, that started the model by armed robbers, and they said he he didn't care if he got shot. For him, it was the money to box, and I, I think that's the attitude I'd had. At that stage. Yeah. It was a bad yeah. attitude to have, and. Uh, and you were gambling. I was well. gambling. It was progressing. Oh, sort I was of gambling. Thing. Yeah, progressing really bad. And uh, yeah. I remember uh, when I was uh, after I'd hit the uh, second bank, I went down to Melbourne, and because uh, it was too hot in Sydney, and uh, it, uh, I was, I was really 
probably put an eight hundred on a horse, eight hundred dollars in one go. I mean, that, that, huge that, that's, that's huge money yeah. in those days. That, that's that's eight eight. Um, Straight away, that's going to attract attention too, isn't it, John? It well, they have the, it sticky as well. That's the funny thing with the tabs don't care because yes. um, you know it's like the casinos, all this illegal money. Some of these people. There was a bank manager lost in Perth with, with one of these um, online bookies. Lost six million. And the judge said, he gave him about eight years, and the judge said, the bookmaker should be standing in a dock with you. He yeah. knew you were a bank manager. How did he let you lose six million dollars? But they, you know, they get away with it. And, About uh, other people's money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I knew that when I was betting big. That, uh, and I finished up, um, there was an SP bookie uh, where I was staying just before I went to Melbourne, and... Uh, I robbed him too. He, he, yeah. he came out, he had a minder. Big, right, yeah. I think he was next yeah, footballer. Big fella behind him, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I haul him up and uh, I could see the footballer wanted to jump me. You know, yeah. and, uh, and the bookie had made a mint that day because uh, all the favourites got beaten. I'd lost all my money. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was with a tab or the SP. And I knew, I knew the SP worked in the, in, the, uh, yes. in the pub. So I grabbed him in the car park and uh, that, that was tight go because I knew the football and I I wouldn't shoot I, I'd, I'd make my mind I wouldn't shoot if a guy jumped me I'd try and run or uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't shoot or struggle um, and I, I think I proved that uh, yeah. later when I went to Melbourne anyway I got away with that went to Melbourne was your pistol and, uh, always loaded mate? it was always loaded or yeah it was loaded yeah. Yeah, it was loaded yeah. but um, not cocked yep I never cocked it yeah. and uh, that 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 you know you haven't got, so if, if someone's coming at you you haven't got time really to uncock it. So I yeah. just knew I wouldn't shoot anybody. Um, it was all for bluff. Yeah, that's I, exactly right. Yeah, you I'm, wanted to go. You don't yeah. really want to hurt anyone. No, yeah. that, that's it. And I just, um, I think I lived in a bit of a make, make-believe world, really. Um, yeah. That, that yeah, everything will work out. Yeah. You know? yeah. I didn't, I didn't, um, I was a good chess player, but I just refused to look further yeah. ahead. I just, because I didn't see any future. You know, I couldn't get to America to go a lot of Lost her um, in a bowl looking for me. You lost your mum, which devastated lost your mum. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, I didn't really have anybody. And yeah. so, uh, and I remember, uh, yeah, down in Melbourne, I was going to these uh, carousel restaurants and dating all these blondes, bloody, uh, you know, yeah, tipping them. And, uh, You're a ladies' man. Well, in those days, um, you know, you're tipping the girls and ask them out. Some say yes, yeah, some say no. But, um, you know, it was... It was probably the only time I've ever really done that. I had a lot of different girls. You know, yeah. Usually I'm just a one one girl guy. Yeah. And it was just that time I'd sort of lost it and uh, just didn't care. I was living from day to day. Well, yeah. I knew the next day I could get killed on the internet. Um, yeah. I was on the most wanted list. And uh, so uh, anyway, I hit a bank and uh, what I was doing – I still had the disbelief I was going to get to America. Yeah. But, but I knew that Interpol were looking for me. And uh, and when I rang uh, Kathy, uh, that's the girl, her mother answered, said, look, um, the police have been here, Interpol are looking for you. And I knew that was it. You know. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. so I hit, hit this uh, bank at Kensington. And I used to try and get into a bank inside a minute, yep. do it all in a minute. And I had a guy who was going to drive a car, but he backed out. And so uh, he just changed his mind. So I parked the car across the street. And I had I always used to have a plan for a getaway route. And I had it. So I'd run, drive down at the end of the getaway, the, the uh, dead end, dead end, yep. jump out and run across his paddock. And I timed it beforehand. Yep. And I'd catch this train. It was perfect, you know, perfect getaway. Um, stolen car. But what happened, um, they came after me to <laughs> Two bank tellers. They came yeah. after me with guns. I ran across the street, got to the car. And they, crushed, yeah, they yeah. fired yeah. shots, fired shots, and they hit the car, hit the back of the car. And uh, I pulled the car door open and went like that over to, over it. And I was bluffing. Yeah. But they didn't know that, and they jumped behind it. And I jumped in the car, hit the engine, and then went to go, and this truck driver in front of me cut me off. And I went up around him on the footpath, just got around him, and he came after me. Now, we're in a dead end. I got to the end of the uh, street and he's come behind me. Uh, uh, you know, big guy. And, uh, yeah. yeah, in his You're truck. You're thinking, Jesus. You know? <laughs> well, you know, I just, 
I should have done what I was supposed to do. I get out and run, I catch the train. It was yep. a perfect timing. But ego took over. I was angry. So yep. I got out, ran up to the truck with a gun, and he saw me coming, he wound the window up. Yep. So I tapped in a window, you know. I said, yeah. What's, what's not much good wind a window up? Yeah. He yeah. said, well, You've got me, what are you going to do? Yeah. And he was like that, honestly. He was like that. He thought he was going to shoot you. He was like that. Yeah. Um, so I just laughed and ran off. But then I ran across the paddock, and over there, these trains, I don't know if it's still the same, but what happens is that they close the gate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. just as the trains arrive. And this little guy was there. He saw me. I was about 10 metres away. He closed the gate. He stand there like that. Yeah, and I got the knife. and I said, listen, you've got to let me in. I said, I'm desperate. I've got to get this train. Yep. And he said, no, fella, you have to catch the next. I said, look, the train's here. Just let me in. He said, can't do it. Can't do it. I looked at and I seen the tellers and, and the truck driver yeah, about 100 metres away. No, yeah. they weren't. They were standing there watching us. Yep. Anyway, the train went. He opened the thing. And later mm. on, they said I caught the train. They, they, they thought I'd caught the train. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I jumped down the railway track and there's this huge fence, I don't know, that led into uh, down there was a factory. And somehow I got over this fence. When you're desperate, you can do it. Yeah, you know, the and, adrenaline hits in yeah, and it takes over. It and, yeah. does, it does. And uh, so I jumped down and uh, there were two guys sitting in a car having lunch. <laughs> I, got, I got in a bank, just showing the guy. So, guys, I'm in a bit of trouble. I've got, I've got to get to the city. Yeah. And they you know, looked at me and the guy and said, oh, we can, we can do that for you. Yeah. I mean, they're just so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, we can do that for you. I said, oh, thanks. We drove out. There was a security guard there. They waved him through. We went, there's police sirens everywhere, cop cars everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and one of, one of them said, the young guy, so, geez, they're looking for somebody. <laughs> I said, oh, there's always somebody in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so yeah. we're, we're driving along and uh, we're talking about football. Yeah. And those guys from Collingwood, that hit, that hit home to me. Yeah. The Collingwood's football supporters. Collingwood was the old style during the war and later on the tough working suburb, sort of yeah. like Mount Truitt here in Sydney. Yeah. They hated the cops, you know, yeah. and, and uh, they grew up against anti authority. And yeah. I thought, these guys are on my side. And yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 So I said to them, uh, They don't give a rat's what you've done. No, I, 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 give just, them, yeah. I give them a fair bit of money. I said, Look, that's for petrol. So I, he said, Gee, it wouldn't come sound. I said, Look, I should put the rest on, on the Just magpies. Take it. Yeah. Put the put on the magpies and win a premiership. He yeah. said, I'll do that. Yeah. Well the magpies got to the grand final, got boot on a siren by a point. The guy oh. kicked a fool goal from near halfway. St. Kilda. And yeah. St. Kilda was trained by a cop. Yeah. Alan Jones, can you believe it? Yeah. I mean the irony of it all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the irony of it. But different people, different times. Oh, look. Different so, Australia, mate, yeah. Well, I tell you what, yeah. um, when I got home and watched the 6 o'clock news, they didn't say anything. Yep. So they were never aware. Because yep. that, that would have been a, an extra charge, a heavy charge, you know. Yep. They didn't say anything, those guys. Yep. They were hoping I'd get away. And and uh, it just shows you a bit. But the truck driver, he was headline news. Yeah. They brought him in, hero. He said, I jumped out of a truck. He said he ran like a cur dog. He said I went after him. He was too fast. Isn't yeah. it amazing? Yeah, everyone becomes a fucking hero straight. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He said or I crashed tackle yeah. him. And, yeah, he said yeah. I couldn't. They said but he had a gun. He said you know what I don't want that gun no there. He said you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I thought okay, all right. That, he's, that, a, he's on the news. Yeah, he's that's in the right. paper. I've that, got the money. Yeah, it's good days where I've got the money. No one got hurt. Yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, I, I eventually uh, I was learning to go to. Uh, dance because I cafe in America. I always love these dances. I was learning to tango. I had one one more night to go. Yep. And uh, the guy that was going to drive a car. Yep. He must have seen the headlines. Knew I did it. He's giving me up. Yeah, right. He's yeah. giving me up. So when I went in for the dance school, I was going to Perth the next day. Yep. Uh, all the cops were dressed as dancers. I went down. They grabbed me. And before I got there, I, I was running late. I nearly didn't go. Yeah. That shows your fate, you know. I nearly didn't, I couldn't get a parking spot. And uh, so I was about eight minutes late. A guy went down there ahead of me. They thought it was me and they jumped him. Oh. <laughs> Knocked him around a bit and uh, yeah. he's, he, they said to me, he's going to sue us. And I said, well, that's your bad luck, like, you know. He, yeah. Yeah. Because he must have been like, what the fuck is yeah, going on here? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. he got there at the time I was supposed to get there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they tried to put all these extra charges on me. Uh, I didn't do them. Yeah. Uh, but but they had me. They had the gun. Yep. That's um you know, 
with Commonwealth Bank, so I knew Sydney. Uh, yeah. I'll be going to Sydney later. So, uh, you know, I, I thought, bloody hell, um, you know, I, I knew I would have kept going. Yep. You know, I was bitten, bitten huge and, uh, you know, so, so I would have kept robbing banks. So it's just a matter of time. Um, it was just idiotic. You know, you, yeah. You, you know, really, you know, when, when you look back, but I just know that um, I was sort of um, an outsider. Yep. At that stage, you know, I, I couldn't identify with anybody, and uh, I just didn't give a damn. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that—that's the reality of it. And there's people when you're like young that. Too, you could leap tall buildings in a single bed. Oh, you know, well, I, I was super, super yeah. confident. You know, yeah. And, uh, and pretty fit. And oh, uh, very, yeah. very fit. Yeah. You know, always a good runner. Um, so, yeah, I was always confident I'd get away. But uh, so when I went to Penridge, we get they handcuffed me to a red-headed guy, and. Uh, Instead of going in a normal van with everybody, I, I knew he must have been someone special, but um, he was nervous. He, he wouldn't quiet. talk to me. And yeah. we, we got out of Pentridge, and uh, and I'd heard Pentridge pretty tough place. And uh, the screws they in handcuffed. They said, uh, "Who's Rory?" I said, "I'm Killick." They said, "You come with us, Killick." We walked away. Next thing I heard, this Rory screaming. These crims had him down the ground. They were kicking him and thumping him. I said, well, "They said you didn't see anything." Yep. Turned out he'd raped and murdered a sixteen-year-old girl and a six-year-old girl. Oh, jeez! And yeah, so and he he got his just desserts when he he got a welcome. Well, committee. well, he did, he did, and then uh, he asked for protection. They put him down Hastings Division where he got flogged down there. Yep. But Hastings Division was notorious where um, everybody knew it was a jail in a jail at Pandries, and if you went down there, uh, as soon as you got there, you'd be stripped off and flogged and with batons and kicked and bashed mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. sitting near unconscious. Welcome. Yeah. yeah, and they're laying down the floor. And, and then you'd be yeah. run. running it. And yeah. then you'd be sent down to break the box <coughs> down the labios. So I knew that. I knew that because uh, we got grafted in New South Wales, which was uh, pretty much exactly the same, um, yeah. same procedure. So I knew that, but I still was determined to escape. And uh, I, I bribed this guy to give me some pepper, and I was going to jump out. In those days, they went to all the country stations and uh, suburban stations. And you had your civvies on unhandcuffed. You wouldn't believe it. So they'd stop and stay, say, who's so-and-so, you get out and they take you to the court. Yep. So as soon as they stopped, I was going to jump out with a pepper whack and, and run off. And you know? yeah. yeah, but um, the guy got caught with a pepper and he said, oh, kill this guy. Uh, told him what to say. They got me and just put me in Segra. Uh, used to throw water on him every morning, uh, four, four in the morning. Freezing. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and put me in a little dog box uh, to go to court. So I used to go on this little, n- nearly bloody smothered, you know. If you had claustrophobia, you'd near be a psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in a little dog box. Um, they said, we'll fix you. But anyway, at, at court, I still haven't got a chance. Um, got sentenced, stepped out. Uh, the judge didn't like him being handcuffed at court, so they took the handcuffs. And when we come out, we're in a little um, hallway. I whacked one of, one of the screws in the guts. Yep. And he, he went sort of, yeah, he was out of the game. And push the other one, got to the door, but I had to stop and open it. When I opened it, got to the steps, just about down the steps, this guy's tackling me from the top of the steps, went rolling around, and uh, oh, then the, cop, the cops got there before, uh, oh. before I got away. Now, I was in my civvies. Yep. I, I would have got away for sure. Yep. Um, but, so that's how it close. Then they take me down Hay Division. Yep. Get absolutely flogged there. I'd already had a bastion from the cops. Got hit with batons, bashed. You've, you've just got to. What do you do? You, well, you, you, you switch you take off the flogging and you switch, switch off. off. Yeah. yeah, you go into another. Yeah, uh, yeah I remember process. I had my lip. Uh, I bit through my lip, so I wouldn't scream out. And uh, yeah, and uh, it was pretty heavy stuff. Then I had to go and break rocks uh, down there, which is hard. Yeah, okay. Jeez, well, you, it's bloody. Yeah. Well, you go down here, you had to march everywhere. I mean, yeah. It was it was sort of um, military style, but it was based on terror. Everyone was frightened because yeah. they'd get bashed. Hit if you didn't salute, um, yeah. you'd get bashed. And you go there and they'd come in and look at the rocks and you'd have a big hammer yep. and you'd have to break them the size of your fist of a morning. And if they'd come in, if they weren't the size of your fist, you'd only get whacked. And then you sit in a stool in the afternoon and those fist-sized ones, you had to break them the size of your fingernails. Mm. And they'd say, look, this is bigger than your finger or something like yeah, that. Yeah. They wanted yeah. to get you. Yeah. And I remember... Um, Looking for an excuse. Yeah. I was pretty dirty on... I, I think it's important I get this card. I was pretty dirty on gays because that, that, I'd been accosted quite a few times in toilets, stuff like that, by yep. gays, and that guy tried to rape me and uh, yep. and Dad used to hate him, so I, I was anti-gay. And then I heard 
these two guys. Uh, there's two guards that are about six foot six. They were monsters. Jesus. And uh, they were bloody monsters. Yeah. And uh, I heard them talk and I knew who they were. I was just a little kid in there saying, why do you let men do this to him? Why do you let men do that? And he said, I don't know, sir. And they said, whack, whack, whack. And the kid's crying, you know. They built the business. Yeah, and they, when, when they went out, there's a loose rock. And, you know, I, was, I knew I was risking it, but I pulled this loose rock out from the wall near the bottom and looked through and I saw this little kid. He looked about 14, blonde hair, oh. blue eyes. He should have been a girl. Yeah. And yeah. I, knew, I knew straight away. I said, you know, I'm wrong about this. This, yeah. this kid, he should have been. He's, he's a natural guy. He should have been a girl. You know? Yeah. And I put my hand through. I called him over and held his hand. I said, listen, you're going to be okay. You'll be okay. Yeah. And he saw, he saw, I said, you'll be okay. I said, be, how long? And he said, a week. I said, you'll be out of here soon. I don't need to touch you again. You'll be all right. Yeah. He said, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I said, you'll be okay. I let his hand go and put it in. Now, I didn't he, see he possibly him. saved you but just yeah. by, by having that little bit yeah. of extra confidence. Yeah, and yeah getting that him. confidence, yeah. It's unbelievable. But it changed my mind. I realised then yeah. that some people are meant to be gay and, and it changed, just changed my whole attitude. Yeah. And ever since then, I, I haven't been any gay and uh, I've yeah. got a lot of good gay friends. But but yeah. until that moment, you know, I'd been anti-gay because they'd come you on to me in toilets and stuff like that. that, like that and, uh, yep. and uh, yeah. Of course, in those days, they were persecuted. They, they yeah. didn't have the clubs and stuff where they could go to. They, they were... Underground, you know. And, I remember uh, in the seventies. Yeah, know, they used absolutely. To get, yeah, yeah. People say, let's go, let's go, poof to bash it and stuff like that. Oh, a little yeah. shocking, and some of them got killed. And, that. and you know, I'm just showing that uh, what my attitude was. But, yeah. but um, that moment, you sort of, yeah. yeah that, that, that I'm was, the same as you, mate. I, you know, I'm, I'm straight, but I don't care what people. No, are into. it's your business, and but you, uh, you've got to learn. You've got yeah. to learn. And when, when you're brought up the way I was, uh, yeah. by someone like Dad, who was just yeah, yeah from the old school. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so that, that changed my mind about it. And uh, anyway, I did um, all that time uh, down in Pentridge, and, uh, and then in '68, I'll never forget. I um, I decided to uh, to bust out, yep. and I had a couple of guys with me. Uh, and I managed to uh, saw through the bars in you know, Air Division. Um, we're in a dormitory. Um, then I cut a hole in the door. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. And um, then uh, put my hand down through that hole, pulled the lock back, opened the door, had an iron bar from the weights, and then my mate knocked up. There were two of us, and uh, three of us actually. One, one stayed inside to watch the other guys because that stopped them from yelling out. Yeah. And uh, the screw came down and so on. And uh, he went for his gun. I hit him with the iron bar. Yep. Uh, didn't didn't go down. Yep. Hit him again and he still didn't go down. So I dropped the thing and uh, he didn't get his gun. His hands dropped his iron. I hit him on the chin. He went down and uh, got his gun off him. And uh, But it, it was too much noise screaming out. And and, uh, and I said, where's the keys? And he didn't have the keys. And when Ryan and Walker had escaped, they changed the security. They used to leave him in the wing with the keys, but then they took the keys off him. Yeah. So we couldn't get out. Um, we, we were trapped in there. And what happened, uh, we got surrounded. They brought in 18 carloads of police. You just wouldn't believe it. Uh, SWAT team, uh, the ex-police uh, minister came in, uh, the governor, they lit up the whole place. Then they shot the lights out where we were. Uh. And, I, and we were upstairs and I pulled her an organ, this organ um, where they used to have the church, went across, stopped them getting up the stairs. Yep. And we had this siege um, for quite a while. And uh, and what saved us on the loudspeaker, the governor was, had a reputation man of his word. Yep. And the, a thousand crims could hear it. It was all over the loudspeaker. And I wouldn't, we wouldn't come down. And uh, I said, why would we come down? We're going to get bashed, flogged, get 14 years. No way, I'm staying here. And... Uh, and uh, you try and get up here, and I'm going to bloody, I'm an expert shot. I wasn't, and uh, yep. I, you know, I aim for the eyes. You know, yeah. well, that, that stopped them a bit. I opened up all the, uh, all the uh, dormitories around us, had all the guys watching to see if they're coming through the roof or the bars. So, so yeah, they were all on side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this it, is wild stuff, mate. It's not it, a bloody it, move. It's yeah. wild stuff, but yeah. it took a lot out of me. It's, it's the worst, um, the worst time I've ever happened in my life um, because. I really thought I was going to be dead, you know, yeah. and uh, and I even thought about ending it there. And I said, I thought about Kathy, and I thought, if I, if I die here, a bullet in my brain like a mad dog, you know, uh, yeah. she'll hear about it. You know, I'm better than that. I'll, I'll, I'll come through this. Gut wrenching, gut wrenching for her and the oh, family yeah, and everything, yeah, mate. Yeah. John, what what we might do is, yeah. um, 
we'll we'll wrap this up and and come back shortly. Yeah. Um, uh, this is episode twelve, so yeah. we're going to make it into two parts. Right. So we'll come back shortly uh, right. with episode thirteen. You've got you're a wealth of information, mate. Right. It's, it's, okay. it's Australian criminal history, and it's it's bloody interesting stuff. When we get back, we have to hear about your famous escape. Sure. It only happened once in this country. But I've got to say what happened to me here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So. All right. And uh, we'll pop back shortly. That was episode 12, right. folks. All right. And we'll pop back. Uh, Mr. Kelly's just got so much information. He's, and uh, we look forward to speaking to him shortly. So we'll be back shortly. Thanks, swingers. Thank you. See you.